Hello everyone, this is YLAM here. In today's video, I want to go ahead and talk about Fujifilm. Right now, Photokina is well on its way. It looks like all of the major announcements have been completed. There's definitely plenty to talk about, but I want to go ahead and talk about Fuji for this video. One of the things that I do want to say though in advance is that I am using an X-T3 right now and I'm powering it through this battery pack. It looks like it's working pretty well, but I'll let you know with a little bit more testing. But so far, so good. So let's go ahead and get into Fujifilm. Their major announcements are really centered around medium format cameras. They want to be the market leader in the bigger than full frame sensors. Now, I don't really want to go into the specs or anything like that. There are plenty of videos out there that will do that. What I really want to discuss is that I think Fuji is missing a golden opportunity to be the market leader in something that's more important than just medium format. Before I do that, I do want to do a quick history lesson because that will lay the groundwork for why I'm arguing this point. Now, I have been in photography for well over two decades, and there's only one big moment, one defining moment that I reflect back and I realized how big that moment was and it was pretty amazing. And I kind of just want to talk about that super quick. At around 2008, 2009, not, I don't remember exactly, but that's when the Canon 5D Mark II came out. The reason why this camera was important was because that's the first DSLR that had HD video, 720, 720p at that time, but that was revolutionary, okay? There was a person named Vincent Lafayette. He got an early copy and he used that 5D to create a video that was revolutionary. At the time, a lot of people thought it was fake, that he didn't quite do it, but as time progressed and people realized how revolutionary the sensor is in terms of filmmaking, it really changed the culture of indie filmmaking, promotional videos, you know, people can do different things with it that they never were able to do because cinematography at that time was super expensive and you really needed a lot of gear and a lot of funding to get stuff done. The Canon 5D revolutionized what people thought they can do with cameras. And this is one of those moments where it was all inspiring, right? This is also the reason why when Canon puts out a camera that's subpar to video, why their fan base is always so angry. Because you gotta remember, they were the ones that actually started this whole thing, okay? you know, all this venom coming from the community, it's because a lot of these people, they make their livelihoods based off of the Canon cameras that have been using for a very long time. So there is a lot of loyalty there. And sometimes they feel like Canon isn't really holding up their end of the bargain when they actually started this whole thing. So getting back to Fuji, why did I tell that story? The reason why I tell that story is because when they are putting out this medium format and they want this to be the next big thing, I don't think it's going to be in photo. Medium format photography has been around forever. It has different evolutions of it. And right now their current generation at 50 megapixels, the fidelity isn't really that much better than the 45 megapixels from the Nikon D850 or the Sony A7R. I mean, it is better, but it's not significant enough. What I wanna say is that instead of having a headline that says, Fuji makes budget medium format camera or Fuji makes medium format accessible. I would much rather it say Fuji pioneering medium format cinematography because that's something that's way more exciting. In the current market, there's not too many cameras that can do a full frame readout on something higher than around 24 to 26 megapixels, right? And that's full frame. With the current announcements of the Fuji medium format cameras, the video totally sucks. They're leaving it behind just like they did with crop sensors. And then when they left it further enough behind and they realized that was the wrong move, they had to catch up super quick. This is the reason why I think the X-T3 is so awesome is because it is a stills camera at heart, but they crammed in all of these great video features and it makes it a great hybrid camera. They're doing the same thing with medium format. They're letting video drag behind. They don't think it's important. And then all of a sudden, if medium format becomes available, they're no longer the technology leaders in that. This is their chance right now to be the technology leaders, not only in just photo, which it's gonna be hard in medium format, right? There are a lot of companies in medium format that also have deep pockets and they're not just gonna let Fuji run away with it. 
But if they pioneer this video technology, that is something that could be equivalent to Canon putting in video features in their 5D in 2008, 2009. It can be super exciting. And that's something that I wish Fuji will pioneer because that's something that I think we can all look forward to. Don't get me wrong, still pictures in medium format, I'm sure it's great and all, but a lot of us are moving into hybrid shooting. We want to have more than one tool in our arsenal when we're trying to get paid. You know, having video has revolutionized a lot of different ways that we can make money and to do it in medium format, that could be super interesting. Now we already know the 50 megapixel offerings are not going to have great video and that's a real bummer, but their 100 megapixel one has a chance. And that's kind of what I'm talking about in this video. Right now we don't know enough about the camera to ensure that the video is going to be revolutionary, right? Because you could say 4K 30 10 bit, but if it's cropped down to, you know, less than full frame or crop sensor size, then it really isn't revolutionary. But if they can do full sensor, they can do at least minimum 422 10-bit internal, maybe even output out raw, that could be revolutionary. That could be something people get excited about. But if they pioneer that camera in that $10,000 camera, eventually they can take that technology and trickle it down to a $5,000 camera. That's something that's within manageable reach of most of us if we scrimp and save and make sure we sell off some of our old stuff. That would be super exciting. That's what I'm hoping they do. What I'm really fearful of is that they're just going to leave it behind thinking that medium format is only for stills. When they should be thinking of head, they should be pioneering this technology, when they should be the ones ushering the age of large in the full frame video capturing. That would be something that's super exciting and that's what I hope it will happen. I understand that what I'm asking for is super hard, but most industry leading technology, something that will give you a clear advantage that people can't catch up on, that's the type of stuff that I really want to see Fuji film pioneer in terms of video. Now, for those of you watching, I'm sure you noticed that I am very video biased because I'm on YouTube, right? So I want all these video features. So there is a little grain of salt that you want to take on with that. But I still think video is the way of the future. That's something that needs to be incorporated into all cameras coming out from 2018 and beyond. Also, for anybody who's interested about this power pack right now, I've actually been timing it. And the power pack has been running this camera for about 24 minutes straight. Yeah, the video is probably not going to be 24 minutes. Trust me, I cut down a lot of stuff out of it just to keep it short because YouTube attention spans are super short. But the battery still reads full, which means that the battery pack is working. So definitely really cool. This would extend the Fujifilm's camera runtime to about like five hours. So that's super cool. And hopefully it's going to pass with fine colors.